let's say you have a simple frame with a distributed load of a thousand pounds and you want to know what your frame's factor of safety is. In order to do that, you take that applied load, that thousand pounds, and look at the internal reactionary loads within your individual members. Relate those internal reactionary loads to stress, compare that with the material's strength, and that's your factor of safety. Often in mechanics, we're trying to find geometry, loading, or material. Having a target load and knowing the material you want to use, you can find geometry. Knowing your geometric constraints and your available material, you can spec a load rating. And with geometric constraints and a target load, you can select the appropriate material. These three sets of measures can be related through a metric like strain or factor of safety, in the same way that geometry and loading are related through stress, independent of material. And today we'll analyze a simple table frame. This type of frame comes up all the time in structures and machine bases. This one is for a rainwater collection system raising two 55 gallon drums or about a thousand pounds of water three feet off the ground. Let's assume that thousand pounds breaks into 125 pounds per piece of square tube in the top of our frame. Looking at one of those pieces of square tube, we see it has internal reactionary forces at either end of half of 125, that's 62 and a half pounds. Taking an imaginary cut, we'll call it point A, through the middle of that tube, we cut the body free from the rest of the structure. And at the cut end of this free body diagram, there is a reactionary moment equal to that reactionary force where that square tube meets the angle perimeter framing multiplied by that 12 inch distance which is half the length of that square tube. 62.5 pounds of force times 12 inches equals 750 inch pounds. That is the internal reactionary moment in the square tube. Now for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. There also must be a reactionary force to counterbalance that 62 and a half pounds, which is itself 62 and a half pounds. Now very often in a frame like this, failure will first occur in the weakest member due to bending stress in the middle of its length if it's supported on both ends because that's where this internal reactionary moment is the greatest. In our case, this is the square tube on top. In order to calculate our factors of safety in this square tube, let's relate geometry to load to find stress, and then relate stress to our material to find the factor of safety. The equation for stress depends on the type of reactionary load that you're analyzing. Let's look at the moment first. Stress due to bending is normal, that is perpendicular to your cross section because the body is bending about an axis that's parallel with your cross section, compressing one side and putting the other side in tension. And it's equal to your load, your bending moment, multiplied by the distance from your bending axis, your neutral axis, to the point where you're analyzing, all divided by your area moment of inertia, your cross section's resistance to bending. Symbolically, that's sigma equals my over i. The moment we found earlier, it was just 62.5 pounds times 12 inches or 750 inch pounds. Y is the distance from the neutral axis. We're talking about failure here, so we want the maximum Y value, which would be half an inch in our case. I is a property that is only dependent on the geometry of your cross section. Typically, you look up an equation for I in a table that is organized by geometry type. For a simple tube like this, it's 1 12th the base times height cubed for the outer rectangle minus 1 12th base times height cubed for the inner rectangle. For us, that ends up being 0.0555 inches to the fourth, or quartic inches. So that's your stress broken down into its corresponding load and geometry. Crunching the numbers, we get 6,760 pounds per square inch, or PSI. So this metric sums up the relationship between our geometry and our load. We're now ready to analyze failure by relating this metric with a material property, yield strength. 
There are a number of failure theories out there relating stress to strength in different ways. In my experience doing simple machine design, basic mechanism design, a failure theory called maximum shear stress theory, also known as Guest's theory or Tresca's theory, is the most common and super useful. It's also very simple and conservative. When all you have is one normal stress, you simply compare it to its yield strength. I'm assuming this is A36 hot rolled steel. Nothing special about it, low strength steel. A36 is easy because you remember that 36 is its yield strength, 36 KSI or 36,000 PSI. Dividing our stress, 6,760 PSI, into our yield strength, a material property, 36,000 PSI, we get the factor of safety 5.3. Now, if you have multiple internal reactionary loads resulting in stress at the same point, you will have to combine those stresses and find what's called your principal stresses before you analyze failure. In our case, we can get away with analyzing one reactionary load at a time because they result in stress in different members of the frame and at different points within the member's cross sections. And remember, there's not only the reactionary moment we have to analyze, but also the reactionary shear force. And the reactionary shear force is commonly denoted with a capital V, not to be confused with shear stress, commonly denoted as tau. Now, shear stress due to a shear force is that shear force multiplied by a geometric parameter called the moment of area, divided by the same area moment of inertia as before, multiplied by the thickness, not the wall thickness, but the total thickness through which the force travels. Symbolically, that's tau equals VQ over IT. We've already found V, that's the 62.5 pounds. The moment of area is a measure of how much area you have above or below the point where you're analyzing. If it's not a simple shape, you break it apart into simple shapes multiplied by the distance between the little centroids of those individual shapes to the overall centroid of your entire cross section. And for us, that ends up being 0 0.0701 inches to the third, or cubic inches. We've already found I, 0 0.0555 quartic inches, and T is the total thickness where we're analyzing, and for us, that's 0 0.240 inches. And there's our shear stress, broken down into load and geometry. Crunching the numbers, we get 329 PSI. To save time, I'm not gonna get into the theory, but the maximum allowable shear stress is half your yield strength. So that means we divide our shear stress, 329 PSI, into our maximum allowable shear stress, 18,000 PSI and that results in a safety factor of 55, about 10 times safer than the normal stress due to bending in our body. In my experience, that's very common when your lowest factor of safety is where your weakest member is subject to bending. All that we've done so far has been for the square tube, but real quickly, let's consider the angle. Here we have a three by three angle with 3 16 wall thickness. If we ignore the floppy leg, we can model it as one rigid piece of flat bar. Our analysis won't be as accurate, but it will be more conservative. So this is often what I do when I have angle, because I know if my structure is safe with only one leg of my angle, it's definitely safe with both legs. And the analysis is so much simpler. I can just apply my over i for the stress response to the bending moment in the angle iron. The legs of the frame are also subject to axial compression, just force per area. And the legs of the frame have the potential to buckle, which is its own set of equations. Now, if you're unsure what member will fail first, analyze the stress due to all the reactionary loads until you're not unsure anymore. The more of these you do, you'll be able to glance at a frame and have a really good gut feel for which piece will fail first. And then you can just analyze that and save yourself a lot of time. And for a simple frame like this, that's as complicated as it has to be. Mm -hmm.